Hi guys, how are you doing tonight? My name is Caitlin, I'm from grassfedgirl.com. I'm a holistic nutrition consultant and I used to be a personal trainer a long time ago. And I just wanna come on here tonight and talk about the top six carnivore diet mistakes. So I am just hoping that this will resonate with you and you guys will get a lot out of this video. So if you're interested in the top six carnivore diet mistakes, I have another video that's top three and this one I've added a few more. And this I got this idea because today I put an Instagram graphic up which was the top six carnivore diet mistakes. And so I thought, well, I'll make a video to go with it. So I hope this helps you. All right, so the first one, and now I've been carnivore for a year, so I feel like even more of an authority than I already did about this topic. So I just had my carnivorsary October 1st. Yay! So I'm feeling good about that. And so first things first, you know, when I started carnivore, I went all in. To me, there was no going back. It was just 30 days. I committed. I wasn't going to cheat. I was going to do everything that I could to do it right. I got everything ready. I thought about it for a while beforehand. I knew which day I started. I had before pictures. Um, so I just went all in. So I think the first mistake is not going all in, like just kind of going, oh, well, I'm going to have a salad today and, you know, ribeye tomorrow and a steak tomorrow. And um, so, you know, if you're not going, if you're not ready to go all in, you know, you need to mark it on your calendar. You've got to commit because if you're, if you don't commit, you're not going to see the results and you're just going to get frustrated and say, this isn't working. You know, if you're eating, <laughs> sorry, if you're saying, you know, that, you know, you're going to have, have ice cream one day and then be carnivore the next day and it's just going to be all over the place and you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to um see those results and then be able to tell people and you know try to help others so that the first one not going all in number two not enough salt this is a big 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 one so that should be number one probably um but you know, that was a mistake I made in the beginning. I never had problems with electrolytes on keto. So, I mean, maybe I did, but I didn't feel it. So on carnivore, it was just super important for me to have enough electrolytes. And so I just have to have it. If I don't, I'm still, I still need it. I don't, I haven't really decreased my need for uh, electrolytes. So I take about one tablespoon of salt per day, plus my food. I don't know the metric system, sorry. <laughs> um, so it is one tablespoon in America, and plus I salt my food heavily, and um, that seems to help a lot. Now, if you're more active or you're outside sweating, you know, you may need a lot more. Um, I mostly stay inside because it's been hot for like four months. So. Of course, I go outside and get my son and all that. But um, all right. So the next one is under eating and fasting. So I think people try to fast too soon. Um, some people think, well, I was keto before, so I'm going to fast right away. Well, I think long term, the old school carnivores of 10 years plus uh, discourage fasting. You know, this is a nutrient dense, dense diet. So you need to have a lot of fat, a lot of meat. Um, and you need to just eat and eat and eat. And because if you don't eat, you're gonna, your cravings are gonna come back and then you're gonna fall down and eat whatever that you see. So if you're running around hungry, especially the first month or two, you are going to crash and burn on this kind of plan. So you need to eat as much as you possibly can. And then uh, you will be able to sail through your first month or two and then you can adjust from there. Um, but do not just under eat. Don't start fasting all the time. I mean, I think it goes with this perfectionistic, you know, if, if something is good, well, then more is better. Well, more not eating is just 
giving you some sort of dopamine response and you know it's giving your it's it's stroking that perfectionist uh, feeling that we all have somewhere in us and uh it is just a big mess if you are trying to fast for long periods of time when you're first starting out carnivore so definitely no fasting the first month maybe after that you can add it in i mean if you do 16 8 i mean to me that's not really fasting i mean it's just kind of natural um that's intermittent 16 hours of no eating and then eight hours of eating because that's kind of what happens naturally because you kind of gravitate to two meals um, but i'm talking about extended fasting you know for more than uh, 24 hours and stuff like that i think that that's really detrimental and i mean when i started i ate three meals a day i ate first thing in the morning because i knew if i didn't get full right off the bat i was going to start looking around for strawberries and chocolate and um whatever else i could think of you know so uh, for me it was really important to get that fat and protein first thing and then over time i've shifted to more two two meals a day and that's been working and then every once in a while i'll do one meal a day and it's just sort of natural now um like yesterday I ate a big, a big, almost two pound steak. And so I did not, I only ate one meal yesterday. Um, so that's just kind of what happens. But if you start too soon, you will probably have bad results and give up and, you know, cheat and stuff. I mean, I don't like that word cheating, but you know, you won't be able to follow through. All right. So avoiding animal fat, that's number four. Avoiding animal fat is a big problem because People, I think sometimes just that dieting mentality, that low fat comes from the 90s. You know, you think, well, I'm supposed to eat a lot of protein. So you just eat chicken breast or, um, you know, even salmon is really low fat or, uh, I mean, lean pork chops or, you know, <laughs> was a pork loin, the other white meat. So don't fat, don't just eat lean meat because you'll feel sick you'll get really sick if you do that for a few weeks. I mean, um, and you will definitely give up. So do not do that. Uh, always, if you don't, if you have a really lean meat, add some fat to it, some butter, ghee. Uh, if you have, when I do, sometimes even chicken is so gross to me. Like when I get a rotisserie chicken from the store, like the Whole Foods has organic rotisserie chickens and they also have free butter on the bar, so I'll take the pat of butter, wrap the chicken piece around it, and then eat it. Because I just cannot eat that lean chicken. So, um, especially the, the white meat. So that's an idea. Definitely do not eat lean meat or you will not feel well at all. You may end up in the emergency room or something because if you have too much fat, too much lean meat, and too, and too little salt, you will be just totally toast on this plan. Uh, all right, so overthinking the details. I think some people, you know, some some people don't research enough, but some people over research. I mean, some people don't Google anything and don't do any research and just think the answer is going to fall from their lap. I don't know where they think, but some people over research and they over, um, they try to do everything all at once. And you know, they're worried about ketones and macros and fat ratios, and they're worried about organ meats. It's like, you can figure all that out as you go. You do not have to figure that all out the first month. Um, so don't even worry about that and don't overanalyze. And, you know, the people who are doing all this fish eggs and bone, you know, bone marrow and, um, you know, these people were probably eating that kind of thing before. I know I've been eating that kind of stuff since 2009, off and on bone marrow and fish eggs and, um, you know, every different thing, experimenting with that kind of stuff, sardines. and. But, you know, if you're coming off the standard American diet, this is going to be so much healthier for you. And you can always do those kinds of foods later on. And it's definitely not you're not going to have vitamin D deficiency, vitamin C deficiency. I mean, and you probably, everyone has vitamin D deficiency, but a vitamin C deficiency in the first month. So just don't even worry about adding liver and all that mess. You're, you can do that later on. And if you hate liver, you can do the supplements, but it's again, not necessary till after, you know, um, even a year, like I ate liver some this year, but not 
not like that much, like maybe once a month or something like that. And I'm still alive and I'm feeling really good. I mean, if you could see my skin in the daytime, I mean, I look super healthy. It's just nighttime right now. So <laughs> watch some of my other videos when I make them in the daytime. This is alive. So you'll see how healthy I look. Even my dentist was like, your teeth are, your gums are not bleeding like they used to. If I was dying of vitamin C deficiency, you think I'd have bleeding gums? I think I would. <laughs> all right, so the next one, so just don't overthink all the details and don't study all these people who are telling you to worry about every little thing, how much fat, how much protein, you know, how much, how many ounces of meat, how much organ meat, how, you know, it's just overwhelming and you're just gonna give up if you think about all that stuff. So just don't think about that. And then, um, the last one is focusing on the scale. So focusing on the scale was definitely derail you. I, mean, I know I lost about 10 pounds my first month, but some people might just stall out the first month or not lose anything or gain a few pounds. Um, but you know, you just have to have a long-term mentality and not look at the scale. I would just put it away the whole first month and then the second or third month you can measure and weigh and all that. I would focus on non-scale victories like your clothes or actual measurements. Take it all around your body, you know, the, the, your waist, your thighs, your arms. You're going to lose inches. Um, your, your muscle might re, uh, re, I can't think of the word, just move around and, you know, your body composition is going to change whether or not you lose weight. So, um, you can actually gain muscle on this plan while you're losing uh, fat and just not know it. So just put that scale away. It's a mind trip and it's just going to mess you up. So that is what I think about that. And um, so just to recap, you know, you got to go all in. You got to have at least a 30 day mindset. You got to eat enough salt every single day. You've got to avoid under eating and fasting, you have to pretty much stuff yourself, I think, till you can't eat another bite. And you have to avoid fasting, especially if you're really pushing yourself. If you just end up naturally fasting, no big deal. But if you're restricting your food, you are not going to succeed on this plan. And avoiding animal fat, which is too lean meats, that is going to mess you up as well. Also, we're going to say overthinking the details. If you're worried about all your macros, ketones, organ meats, you're just going to overwhelm yourself and give up also. Yeah. And then focusing on the scale is the last one. I'm sure there's more, but that is the main ones that came to me today. And I put that Instagram, I put that up on Instagram. It's a infographic. So if you can follow me there. So now... Um, that's pretty much it for that. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. If you're watching this on the replay, you can turn it off now. But thanks for watching and see you on. Um, you can subscribe, ring the bell, share with a friend. That'd be really helpful. Okay, so now we'll go to the questions. Daniel says, I'm from New Zealand. Hi from New Zealand. <laughs> it's tomorrow, I guess. Congratulations for trying it from New Zealand. I have a question for you, Daniel, is, is the meat that we get up here from New Zealand, is it grass fed? Cause I always tell myself that it is and I hope it is. Um, so Daniel is animal fat is great for energy. Good, Amber says, hi from Texas. Hi, Amber. Uh, Daniel says, yeah, be kind to yourself, eat meat, salt, fats, water, just keep it simple. Yes, I agree. Uh, Kartoff1 says, hi from Minneapolis. Hi. I've been there a few times. It's starting to get cold, huh? <laughs> I'm a, I cannot handle the cold. So you're a stronger person. You must have some strong, like, German genes or something like that. <laughs> Those, um... People came over a while ago and can handle that cold weather. All right, so throw the skills out the window, Daniel says. Great idea. Kristen says, do you drink coffee? I haven't given up on that yet. I drink decaf coffee. I have a video all about coffee, so make sure and watch that one. 
I do drink decaf organic Swiss water process. And I'm sometimes I put ghee in it and it's really y yummy. Uh, and I put collagen. I just made a video about that. So go back and watch that one. And I talk about the pros and cons of coffee also in that one. And then, so you, so Daniel says, yes, the, the, this, so is the lamb and the beef or just the lamb grass fed if it's from New Zealand? Daniel says it is grass fed. So that's cool. That's awesome because I eat a lot of that lamb. I don't know why the lamb has to be brought from New Zealand, but you know, that's America for you. All right. Hi, do you think it's okay to eat pork rinds? That's from Roxanne. Uh, yeah, main thing with that is look at the ingredients, make sure there's no soybean oil in them. Um, make sure that there's not a lot of, sometimes they add like maltodextrin or dextrose or something weird like that, or um, MSG, or just make sure it just says pork and salt and it should be pretty okay. And I mean, you know, it's just up to you, like how much can you handle, how much can you handle of like, you know, that it's kind of hyper palatable, you know, I mean, I don't know if you follow Rob Wolf, but he talks about that a lot. Like the pork rinds is something that, you know, it's salty, it's fatty, and it's very crunchy. So it's just like, you know, are you overeating it? Is it causing you to just, you just have to monitor, you know, check in with yourself and see how is that affecting you? Because I know like for a few days there, I was eating a lot of, I got went to this fancy butcher and I got all this processed like bacon. It was like beef bacon and lamb bacon. It was all this kind of gourmet stuff and then all these sausages. And I really, but it kind of made me like on crack. Like I just, I could not, it was like overly, um, I don't know, it was overly stimulating, I guess. And I just, I it really reacted badly and I just couldn't stop eating it. And I just wanted all the snacky foods and stuff. I mean, I didn't go off carnivore, but you know, it's just kind of that overly processed. It was all, you know, artisanal, blah, blah, blah. But it just had an effect on me that wasn't good. So, you know, you just have to check in with yourself, Roxanne, about that. So Dan, did I answer your question? Dan Be Beedler. I don't think you have a question, Dan. Thank you for watching. Uh, Daniel Smith says, I drink coffee. Okay, Daniel Smith says, everything is grass-fed from New Zealand. Great. I'll keep buying it then. <laughs> I love the lamb chops. I just got some from Aldi today, and they were so good. I just ate that for dinner. If you want to see my meals, I show them on Instagram, like almost every single meal that I eat. I mean, they're really boring because it's like, Hamburger patty, hamburger patty, hamburger patty. <laughs> so, uh, says, I cook grass-fed beef in an air fryer and wonder about the grease that comes out. I, it, it seems the same as the fat after making a bone broth. Is that grease from the meat good, like the fat from making the bone broth? I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, you know, I have trouble just like drinking straight fat, you know, but you can save it and like cook with it later. I mean, I do that some like, you know, after about a week, the air fryer gets a lot of grease in the bottom. So, I mean, you can save that and cook on your stove with it or something. But I mean, I pretty much use my air fryer like nonstop because I hate the mess of the stove. Um, and my husband is kind of weird about beef fat and stuff. He likes olive oil on everything. So I'm not going to be able to use it on him. He thinks beef smells gross, like sometimes. So um, I'm not going to, so I don't really keep it uh, because there's always, I'm always eating something else. And I can't really, I don't know. I'm, it just, it's not appealing to me if you can eat it. Like sometimes I'll pour it over my food or something like that. But I like ghee a lot. So usually I just put ghee on stuff. Um, and also, I mean, I eat a mix of grass fed and non grass fed. And so that's all mixed up in my air fryer. And if it's not grass fed fat, I don't just want to chug it, you know, 
um, cause that's got a lot of toxins and stuff in it. Um, but it tastes so good. Yeah. I mean, so car tough one, tell me if I'm saying that wrong. It says grease versus fat confuses me. It's really all the same. I mean, just wait till it gets hard again and it's going to look the same. Um, I mean, maybe what you're confused about is like a lot of people now are eating that suet, which is beef kidney fat. And that's like, that's kind of soft. Um, I haven't really got into it. I bought some of it and people are eating it raw. Um, and I haven't, it's in my freezer and I haven't really delved into that yet. I mean, one thing is when I was doing keto, I really was fat loading too much. And I just feel like I don't really want to do that on carnivore. Um, so maybe I will add a little bit and see, or see if I like the taste of it. I heard you can cut it even when it's frozen. So, I mean, I might be trying that. So watch on Instagram and I will see what I think about it. Um, people say it's really sweet tasting when it's raw. So I don't know. Yeah, just don't overthink it, Kartoff. I mean, if you save some of it, you want to cook with it, no big deal. On my bone broth, I also remove it because I think it tastes gross and weird. And I just like a bone broth that has no fat on it. And if you've ever been to like a bone broth restaurant or something like they had those in the Bay Area where they served it by the cup and they had, they used to live in San Francisco for 10 years, if you didn't know that. And, um, in New York City, they have bone broth where you can just like walk up and get a, there's also Who Kitchen, I think they have it in New York City. So I mean, if you go to those places, they are definitely not going to be serving you bone broth with a big layer of fat on the top. I mean, that's just not cool. So um, I don't, and I think also when it's cooked really, really long, uh, it's kind of an off taste. So I throw that out. I get my... <clears throat> I just put a bone broth video also. So make sure and watch that. I showed all about how to do that bone broth in the Instant Pot. So do that and I would not leave the fat on there because it just tastes gross. I mean, my husband's a chef. He taught me a lot of stuff about cooking. <coughs> okay, so snake diet Izzy, welcome says if if i have to count anything when it comes to food i'm out it's not sustainable for me i have lost 50 plus pounds so far i'm fasting and carnivore i agree i mean i you know that turned me off with keto counting and worrying about all that and um so yeah i don't like counting because i feel like if i count i will it just makes me too worried about the details and I just get overly stressed out about it. And, you know, I, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing this for, yes, of course, we'd all love to lose weight, but my main thing is my Hashimoto's and getting better from that and healing my autoimmune disease and uh, my autoimmune symptoms and not having flare ups and just having more energy. And also I have, I had terrible digestion when I was eating uh, vegetables and eating paleo and keto. I had terrible, terrible, terrible digestion, always bloated, always miserable, um, constipated. So definitely that is my main motivator. Sure, I would love to lose a little bit more weight, but I just want to see how this really affects my overall health. And that's the main thing for me. And I'm not, there's a lot of things I'm not willing to do. I'm not willing to fast for days on end. I'm not willing to uh, starve myself. I'm not willing to um, make myself crazy. So, uh, all right, what do you think about, so Kartoff is saying, uh, what do you think about the bone broth protein powder? Cost effective compared to Instant Pot and making it yourself is definitely faster, more convenient. Well, I have tasted it. I have bought the, or I have been given the Vital Proteins one. The, it just tastes nothing like, it just tastes watered down and just does not taste good to me at all. And that's a really high quality expensive one. So I don't think that it's worth fooling with. Um, 
I just save my bones. Like we eat a lot of chicken wings. Uh, my husband especially eats a lot of chicken wings. So I just save those. I have, you can buy chicken feet really cheap. And I just save my old bones in a Ziploc in between eating. And then I just throw them in an Instant Pot. So to me, that is almost free. So why would I buy some expensive, you know, powder or something like that? Um, and especially in the winter, I don't eat a lot of bone broth in the summer just because it's so hot here. But in the winter, man, I love it. And I just drink it every morning even. Uh, snake Diet Izzy. Yes, gut healing. It is amazing. Congratulations on your weight loss. And um, yeah, I think I am gut healing. My skin is better. My um, energy is better. I sleep better. So I'm really happy with it. I... I'm just hoping that it keeps going. And I just did a thyroid test. Ah, oh, I sent it off. It's from Everly Well. So I'll put the link for that down below. I ordered my own test. So I'm going to send that. I sent that off on Saturday. And so um, I'm really excited about getting those results for that uh, because I haven't done one in maybe three or six months or something. I don't remember, but I'll see if anything's changed with my autoimmunity and then my, my antibodies. And I, I have a nurse practitioner, so I'll ask her what she thinks if I can change my medication or anything. If, if it's, you know, if my thyroid might be getting too much medication now, if I've continued to heal. So that's pretty amazing. And like I said, it's been one year of me doing all meat diet. Woo, woo. So carts off, you know, you can also make it in the slow cooker. I don't know if you have one of those or you could get one at Goodwill or something. I mean, there's no need to spend a lot of money, but I do love the Instant Pot, especially like I make, especially in winter, I make um, uh, short ribs and uh, it, they sell, one store I go to, they sell uh, country ribs. They're short ribs without the bones. Um, those are really good. And then I stick, once you cook that, you can stick it in the air fryer and crisp it up at the end so it doesn't have that, like, soggy uh, thing. But I love I love my Instant Pot. I didn't think I would. I was freaked out. My sister had to come over and show me how to use it because I was, like, scared of blowing myself up. But then – and I don't have – I don't have the, um, the most deluxe one or anything, just, like, the plain one. Uh, but I, lo I love it. And I use it all the time. I didn't think I would, but you know, it's cool because you can even take it like camping or something. I mean, if you have a hookup, but um, you can even cook eggs or fried eggs, scrambled eggs in the bottom. I mean, it's like a hot pot on the bottom. So I mean, you could cook so many things in there. It's amazing. Uh, Kristen Alcorn says, do you stay away from dairy for your Hashimoto's? I... I haven't really seen that it flares me up or anything. I think I can eat it. I mean, like if I get my th antibodies tested, it doesn't seem like there's a direct effect of the dairy um, because I've eaten it off and on for years. I mean, I would go long periods without it and then I would eat a little bit, especially when I started keto and stuff. And this time I, I have definitely been a lot better because I noticed it would make me bloat up and I would definitely stop losing weight if I ate the dairy. And I think I've become more and more sensitive to it. So unfortunately, I love it. I love mozzarella cheese is like my jam. <laughs> I can eat like a pound at one time. So it's just really better because it's a really big trigger food for me, especially if I'm stressed or feeling like upset or, um, just lazy and you can just grab some cheese and just like shove it in. And so I, for those reasons, I really avoid the cheese. Heavy cream is the same thing. I'll just drink coffee all day with heavy cream. And then by before you know it, I've had a thousand calories of heavy cream and you know, it's not really doing me any favors. So yes, I avoid it. <laughs> I, I did eat it a little bit more at first, but I just noticed it wasn't helping. So 
I eat ghee, which is pretty much all the dairy is removed, and it doesn't seem to have that triggering effect on me to where I want to eat more and more. Daniel says he's been carnivore for eight months now. Well, I'm beating you. I have one year. <laughs> Do I get a chip or something? Is this like AA? All right. Kartoff says, I'm one person. I think it's getting the big eight quart to make a whole bunch at once and keep it in the freezer. Yeah, I mean, I have a six, I think, and it's plenty big. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, Hashimoto's is a th low thyroid. It's autoimmune thyroid, but it usually starts as low thyroid. It can go low or high. It can go all over the place. Um, but that's just the fancy word for the autoimmune condition, but most doctors just call it low thyroid. But if you know anything about autoimmunity, then you call it Hashimoto's because that's what 90% of the cases are. <laughs> Izzy, yes, I bet you have the best Wisconsin cheese up there. I, I know you do. Sounds great. <laughs> I love it. Um, Kartoff says, what do you think about the mental health aspects of carnivore bone breath gut healing like GAPS diet? I mean, absolutely. I was, I did the GAPS diet for a long time and I think I would have had a lot more healing if I just didn't eat all those freaking vegetables. So that's definitely what I think about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I love Natasha Campbell McBride. I mean... I've seen her speak in person at the Weston A. Price Conference in 2000, 2000 and late, you know, a really long time ago. Um, no, it was like 2012, I think, in Santa Rosa or Santa Clara, whatever. I think it was South. Uh, and that, they have the best food at the, at the Weston A. Price Convention. Oh, my God. It's like all... Just, it's like from U.S. Wellness Meats. Hello. I had ate so much Braunschweiger. <laughs> they were like swatting me away from the Braunschweiger table. And they had smoked salmon from U.S. Wellness Meats. Oh, my God. Or maybe it was from Vital Choice. I don't know. But it was amazing. Um, they were like kicking me out. You're eating too much. Get out of here. So, yes, I love that. And I love all the stuff about you know, the gut-brain connection and, you know, our immune system is in our gut. And I just think it's fascinating and I love it so much. And I just wish more people knew about it. And, you know, that's really why I do what I do because I believe in it so much and I want to get the word out. And I think that something has happened to me that you cannot explain, you know, I ate so healthy for nine or 10 years. And then now with carnivore, I've had such a breakthrough and, um, and that can only be explained by cutting vegetables and nuts and seeds and all that stuff. So even though it was keto, it wasn't enough for me. So I think it's amazing. Um, Kartoff says, so I think you're going to say natural source of probiotics. I mean, I'm not worried about probiotics at all. <laughs> Because I ate so much of it. I ate so much, uh, you know, kimchi and sauerkraut. I made my own sauerkraut. I have a video or I have a blog post about me making sauerkraut like 10 years ago. So all that crap never helped me at all. I mean, maybe it did some, but it wasn't <laughs> enough. And I drank so much kombucha because I thought it was healthy. And I was just like a fiend. I had to have a kombucha every single day. So I don't, I mean, I don't know, maybe I could try the high liver or high meat or whatever, like um, the guy from Primal Edge Health, Tristan Hackard, but I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, I don't know. I just think my health has improved so much more in this one year on the carnivore diet where I wasn't trying to eat probiotic foods than anything else I did. So to me, that answers the question about probiotics and the need for probiotics. All right, guys. Well, um, it's 1030 here. It's pretty late. <laughs> Starting to lose my voice a little bit. That's what happens when I, I actually did an Instagram video earlier and something was wrong with the sound. And I talked for like 25 minutes and I didn't know that nobody could hear me. So that really sucked. So I kind of 
got tired from that. But um, so I thought I would come on here and do it instead because I never had problems with uh, YouTube being like that. But um, YouTube is always works really well for me. It doesn't do that glitchy Instagram stuff. So that is just amazing. And you guys are always so responsive, even though I love Instagram, you know, for posting and all that. But I just need, um, I need the video to actually post and not just be silent for 25 minutes. So um, I know you guys would understand that. So before I go, is there any more questions? Just remember the six carnivore diet mistakes, not going all in, not eating enough salt, under eating and fasting too soon, avoiding animal fat, also overthinking the details. You know, don't read too much, just eat until satiety, eat until you can't eat another bite, and then Oh, don't think about liver and macros and ketosis and da 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 da. You're gonna get freaked out and give up. And then focusing on the scale is also something that will make you crazy and give up too soon. All right, guys. Well, I better go. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Please subscribe, like this video, give it a thumbs up. And tell me what else you want to see me make a video about. I really appreciate you watching. And make sure you ring the bell so you never miss one of my videos. All right. Thanks again, guys. I hope you have a good night. Bye-bye.